Welcome to the Getting to Know WordPerfect 6.0 for DOS instructional video. The purpose of this videotape is to introduce the novice WordPerfect user to the basic commands and operations involved in using this revolutionary word processing program. With its new and enhanced features and its optional graphical editing mode, WordPerfect 6.0 is more powerful yet easier to use than ever. Let's begin with the basic installation procedure. The WordPerfect installation program is easy to use, and because the files are stored in a compressed format, you must use this program to install WordPerfect correctly. If you haven't already installed the program on your computer, pause your VCR and do so now. Welcome back. Now let's begin to work with WordPerfect 6.0. At the DOS prompt, type in cd backslash wp60 and press the Enter key. Next, type wp and press the Enter key once again. You will soon move into the WordPerfect program. Before we begin working in WordPerfect, let's briefly discuss the function of the mouse and keyboard. You do not need to use a mouse with this program. However, many users find that the mouse can make using WordPerfect easier and more enjoyable. With the mouse, you can quickly block text, select menu commands, and complete almost any other task in the program. To use the mouse, place your hand over the instrument as shown here. By moving the mouse around on a flat surface, you can manipulate the block-shaped cursor shown on the screen. This block is known as the pointer. As you can see, the movement of the mouse is mirrored by the pointer on the screen. There are basically two ways to use the button position on top of the mouse, clicking and dragging. A click is accomplished by a quick punch of the button. The left button of the mouse is used as a primary tool for selecting items and text. Dragging is accomplished by holding down the mouse button while moving the mouse and then releasing the button. We will be demonstrating the use of the mouse throughout this video. However, almost anything you can do with the mouse can also be done from the keyboard. For additional information on alternative keystrokes, commands, and function keys, consult your user's guide. The decision to use either the mouse or keyboard commands in word processing is a personal choice and is ultimately left up to you. When you first start WordPerfect, a new document window will open. Visualize this window as a clean sheet of paper with preset margins and spacing. At the top of the window is the program's menu bar, along with a flashing cursor, which indicates where text will be inserted when you begin typing. At the bottom of the window, you will find the status line, which displays the name of the font you are using, the current page number, and the exact vertical and horizontal position of the cursor. As you become familiar with the different menus, you will notice that some selections will perform a command immediately, while others will open a dialog box or a cascading menu. Open the file menu by clicking once on its title. The menu drops down below, displaying a list of menu items. A menu item which is followed by three dots will open a dialog box. A menu item followed by an arrow will open a cascading menu. To select a menu item, simply click on its name. To demonstrate this, click on the File Manager selection. The File Manager dialog box appears. For now, let's close this dialog box by clicking on the Cancel button or pressing the Escape key. Another way to access commands and menus is to use the dragging technique we demonstrated earlier. Go back up to the File menu, but this time, instead of clicking, Place the pointer on the word File and hold down the mouse button. The menu will drop down below. Now, without releasing the mouse button, drag the pointer down to the File Manager selection once again. When the selection becomes highlighted, release the mouse button. The File Manager dialog box appears. Close this dialog box once again by clicking on the Cancel button or by pressing the Escape key. You can access menu items with the keyboard by using shortcut keystrokes. Go up and click once again on the file menu. 
notice that there are shortcut keystrokes listed to the right of many menu items. Most of these shortcut keystrokes are function keys which work alone or in conjunction with other keys, such as the Shift, Control, and Alt keys. If you ever want to close a menu without making a selection, simply click anywhere on the screen outside the menu. Do so now to close the file menu. Once you learn the shortcut keystroke for a menu command, you can use this keystroke instead of having to access the command from the menu. You can also use mnemonics to access items from your keyboard. Mnemonics are letters which are displayed in a different color or are underlined in the names of certain menus and commands. For example, we can see that the mnemonic for the layout menu is the letter L, which is displayed in red on the menu bar. To open the layout menu using its mnemonic, simply hold down the Alt key and press the letter L. Now, to select an item from the menu, all we have to do is type in the mnemonic letter of the menu item we want, but this time without using the Alt key. Let's go ahead and select the page command. As you can see, the page command's mnemonic is the letter P. Press this letter on your keyboard and the page format dialog box will open. Most dialog boxes contain options that ask for information from you, the user. In other words, these boxes let you communicate with the program. Like drop-down menus, dialog boxes also contain mnemonics for accessing options from your keyboard. There are many different types of dialog boxes. Some contain check boxes. Check boxes are used for options that can be switched on and off. To select an option, simply click on the small empty square or brackets next to the option you want. An option is shown as being selected if it contains an X. To deselect an option, click on the square once again and the X will disappear. Dialog boxes can also contain radio buttons. Radio buttons appear as a list of mutually exclusive options, meaning only one option can be selected at a time. They are displayed as small circles or parentheses with a selected button containing a dot. Finally, some dialog boxes also contain drop-down list boxes, which are indicated by a small arrow. Clicking a drop-down list arrow, or using its mnemonic, will open a list of available selections. Once you have supplied the requested information in a dialog box, you can then click on the OK button or hit the Return key to activate the changes you have made. Clicking on the Cancel button, or pressing the Escape key, will exit a dialog box without activating the options which were selected. You generally must close a dialog box before you can continue working in the document window. Go ahead and click on the Cancel button in the Page Format dialog box, or press the Escape key to exit the box without making any changes. Before we begin creating a document, let's take a quick look at the different display modes which are available when you use WordPerfect. Text mode displays a document in a single font, which does not reflect the fonts or sizes of characters which you may actually be using in your document. Also, the contents of imported pictures and graphics will not be shown on screen. Graphics mode simulates a WYSIWYG display, which stands for what you see is what you get. In other words, the display will look close to the way the document will appear when it is printed. Text will be displayed in the actual fonts, sizes, and attributes you have chosen. Plus, graphics mode will display illustrations and other graphics on the screen, and allows you to move and resize these graphics using the mouse. Finally, page mode will also display your document as it will appear when printed. However, while graphics mode shows only the body of the document, Page mode will display additional items, such as document headers, footers, and footnotes. Although graphics mode and page mode will display type and graphics as they will appear when printed, the performance of these modes is slower than that of text mode. Here's a helpful hint when working with complex documents that contain multiple fonts and graphics. Enter in and edit your text in text mode. Then switch to graphics or page mode to insert graphics and finalize your layout. You can select any one of these display modes by pulling down the view menu. Here we can see the three different modes of operation. The asterisk indicates we are currently in text mode. 
For demonstration purposes, we will begin our lessons in text mode and then switch to the graphics mode to view the differences. Using a word processing program is similar to typing on a typewriter. However, with a word processor, you will not need to press the Enter key at the end of each line. The type will flow automatically to the next line. If at any time you hit a wrong key and get an unexpected message box, pressing the Escape key should get you out of any trouble. For our first lesson, you will need to enter in a few paragraphs. Press the Tab key to begin each paragraph and press the Enter key twice to double space between paragraphs. If you make a mistake while typing, press the Backspace key to back up and correct it. Now, pause your VCR and type in the following text. When you have entered in the text, your screen should look something like this. If the text you have just typed in is running off the screen, it means you have a different font selected than we do. Simply continue on. Now that we have typed in the three paragraphs for our example, let's use a pull-down menu to change a character attribute. You can choose items from a pull-down menu using either the mouse or keyboard. This time, let's use the keyboard to select the bold attribute. To access the font menu with the keyboard, hold down on the Alt key and press the letter O. Now, to choose the bold attribute, you can either press the selection's mnemonic, which in this case is the letter B, or you can press the down arrow key several times until the bold selection is highlighted, and then press the Enter key. The bold attribute is now turned on. When you begin typing again, the text will appear in bold. Now, press the Tab key and type in the following sentence. Please respond as soon as you can. Notice how the text you just typed in appears in a different color or intensity on the screen, indicating that it is bold. Because we are in text mode, the bold type appears only as a different shade or color than the text you had already typed in. Now let's switch into the graphics mode to see how our text will appear when printed. Remember, to switch modes, all we need to do is pull down the View menu and select Graphics Mode. Now we can actually see how the text will look when printed. Also note that our mouse pointer has changed to a graphics arrow. Let's turn off the bold attribute, but this time we'll use a shortcut keystroke to access this menu item. First, let's switch back to Text Mode. Next, open the Font menu to view the shortcut keystrokes available. As you can see, the shortcut keystroke for bold is F6. Notice also that the bold menu item has an asterisk next to it, indicating that this feature is currently active. If we were to click on this item now with the mouse, the bold feature would be turned off. But at this time, let's close the font menu by clicking anywhere outside the menu. Now that we know F6 is the shortcut keystroke for the bold attribute, we can turn off the bold feature by simply pressing this key instead of having to access the menu. Go ahead and press the F6 key now. And also notice that the numerical cursor position in the lower right corner of the screen changed color, indicating that bolding has been turned off. The text you now enter will no longer be in bold. Pressing the F6 key again would reactivate the bold feature. In other words, selecting a font attribute in a menu or with a shortcut keystroke will either activate or deactivate the current selection. Next, press the Tab key and type in the following sentence. Thank you for your help in this matter. As you can see, the bold attribute has been turned off. You have just created your first document in WordPerfect 6.0. However, it has not been saved to your hard drive. If you were to exit WordPerfect without saving, you would lose the document and all the work you have done. When you save a file, it will be automatically placed in the WordPerfect documents directory, so you don't have to enter in the entire path, just the file name. If you would like files stored in a different directory, you will have to enter the path name in the Save Document dialog box. Use your mouse or keyboard to select the Save command from the File menu. The first time you save a document, the Save Document dialog box will appear. At this time, we can name the document and save it to the WP Docs directory on our hard drive. This is a directory which WordPerfect has created to store all of your documents in. 
Go ahead and type in Lesson 1 in the File Name box. Then click on the OK button or press the Enter key. Notice that the file name we have chosen now appears in the lower left corner of the document window, along with the name of the subdirectory it resides in, and our hard drive letter, in this case, C. You have just saved your first document in WordPerfect. Next, there are two different types of exit commands, exit and exit WP. The exit command will only close the document you are currently working on, but will not exit the program. The exit WP command allows you to save the document and then exit the WordPerfect program. Remember, you should always exit the WordPerfect program before you turn off your computer. For demonstration purposes, let's exit WordPerfect now. First, select Exit WP from the File menu. The Exit WordPerfect dialog box appears, asking you if you want to save any changes to the document you are working on. Because we have not made any changes since we last saved this document, we do not need to save it again now. So, we'll click on the Exit button and return to the MS-DOS prompt. Let's begin to work with some of the most common and useful text editing commands in WordPerfect. Begin by typing in WP from the WP60 directory and then pressing the Enter key. Remember, when you start up WordPerfect, a new document window will automatically appear. However, at this time, we will not be creating a new document. Instead, let's open the document we previously saved. Select the Open command from the File menu and the Open Document dialog box will appear. Here we have three ways of opening a file. First, we have the option of typing in the path and the file name we wish to open. Second, we can click on the arrow to the right in the file name box to select one of the last few files we edited. Or finally, we can make use of WordPerfect's File Manager feature. The File Manager feature of WordPerfect allows you to view files and directories on your hard drives and floppy drives. You can also copy files from one directory to another or delete files and directories. In short, the File Manager gives you complete control over the WordPerfect files on your disk drive. Now, let's go ahead and open our Lesson 1 document. Instead of typing in the path name of your document, access the File Manager by clicking on its button or pressing the F5 key on your keyboard. A new dialog box will open with the current directory, WPDocs, highlighted. Because we know that our document, Lesson 1, is located in this directory, all we have to do is click on the OK button or press the Enter key to view a list of all the WordPerfect files located here. As we mentioned earlier, to the right of this list, we can see the options that are available to us while working within the File Manager. Here we can copy, move, delete, or print files, among other things. Now let's go ahead and open our Lesson 1 file by double-clicking on its name, or by using the down arrow key on our keyboard to highlight the selection and then pressing the Enter key. Our file is quickly opened. There may be times when you want to make changes to a file but still keep a saved copy of the original or last version of a document. In this case, you will want to save the new document to a file with a different name. To do so, you will need to use the Save As command. Select the Save As command from the File menu. The Save Document dialog box appears with the document's current file name highlighted. Go ahead and type in Lesson 2. Notice that the highlighted text is deleted as you type in the new file name. Now click on the OK button or press the Enter key. At this point, we have two copies of the same document saved to our hard drive under the file names Lesson 1 and Lesson 2. Before we begin to edit our new document, Lesson 2, Let's learn how to move the cursor within a document. We can accomplish this task using either the mouse or the keyboard. You can move the cursor to any point in a document where text appears. Place the pointer anywhere in the first paragraph and click. The insertion point will move to that location. Go ahead and click several times anywhere within the document for practice. Notice that the insertion point cannot be placed in an area you have not typed in before. Now, let's try the arrow keys on your keyboard. Press the different arrow keys several times to practice maneuvering through the typed text. 
Use whichever method feels comfortable to you, the mouse or the arrow keys on your keyboard. Now let's insert some new text in our document. For demonstration purposes, we will be using the mouse. Let's add a sentence in the middle of our second paragraph. Move the cursor to the letter B in the word by. Next, type in the following sentence and then press the space bar twice at the end of the sentence. Please try to reach me tomorrow at my office between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. Notice that as we type, the text appears where the cursor is positioned. Any text which is after our inserted text is pushed forward and reformatted. You can also delete characters with the cursor using the backspace or delete keys. Move the insertion point to the space between the words my and office in the sentence we just typed. You can now delete characters to the left of the cursor by pressing the backspace key. Delete the words at my using the backspace key. You can delete characters to the right of the cursor by using the delete key. Delete the word office by using the delete key. When using a word processor, making changes can be quick and easy. There is an editing feature in WordPerfect called blocking. With this feature, you can select any portion of a document's text and then make changes to only the text you have selected. For example, instead of deleting text one letter at a time using the backspace or delete keys, you can block a section of text and then delete it with a single keystroke. Blocking text can be accomplished by using either the keyboard or mouse. To block text using the keyboard, let's move the cursor to the first letter in the word thank in the last sentence in our document. Next, select the block command from the edit menu. Notice that the words block on now appear on the left side of the status line in the bottom left corner of the screen. Now, use the right arrow key to block the rest of the sentence. When the whole sentence is highlighted, press the backspace or delete key to delete the entire selection. Blocking sections of text is a common procedure used in WordPerfect. Take note that you can block text in any direction and that using the down arrow will extend the block a whole line at a time. Also note that pressing the escape key will turn off the blocking feature. You can also block text by using the mouse. This technique is often easier and quicker than blocking text using the keyboard. Blocking text with the mouse is accomplished by holding down the mouse button and dragging across the text you wish to select. For instance, block the sentence, please try to reach me tomorrow between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. in the second paragraph by dragging the pointer from just before the P in please through the rest of the sentence. Remember to hold down on the mouse button and drag the mouse until the pointer moves to the end of the sentence. Then, release the mouse button. You can also select blocks of text by clicking the mouse button. A double click will select a word, while a triple click will select an entire sentence. A double click is accomplished by clicking the mouse button two times in rapid succession, and a triple click three times. Clicking four times rapidly will select an entire paragraph. First, to cancel the text we already have selected, click anywhere in the document. Now, double click on any word to select it. Then, click anywhere to deselect it. Repeat this process, this time with a triple click to select an entire sentence. Then, deselect it by clicking anywhere on the document. You should take some time to practice blocking and selecting text using whichever method you prefer, the keyboard or the mouse. Next, once you have blocked a section of text, there are several things you can do with it. For instance, you can change the font attribute of the text you have selected. In the first sentence of the second paragraph, block the text for both of these projects. Next, go up to the font menu and select italics. Because we are in text mode, the phrase appears in a different color, indicating that its attribute has been changed. Now let's switch to graphics mode, so we can see how this text will appear when it is printed. As you can see, the italicized and bold parts of the text appear in their true form. 
Now that we have switched to graphics mode, we will be staying in this mode for the remainder of the video. Next, if you accidentally delete or drag a block of text to a new location, you can access the undo command in the edit menu. The undo feature reverses your last editing command. That is, it undoes the one editing function you performed immediately before you access the undo command. Watch now as we demonstrate this feature. Suppose we accidentally deleted a sentence in our document. Before doing anything else, we must immediately access the undo command in the edit menu. And our last action is reversed. The deleted sentence reappears. A few of the most common text editing commands are the cut, copy, and paste commands. These commands make it easy to move text around within a document or even to another document. When you use the cut command, the selected text is cut or removed from the document and placed in a temporary storage buffer in the memory of your computer. When you use the copy command, the selected text is copied into the storage buffer but is not cut or removed from the document. Finally, when text is pasted, it is retrieved from the storage buffer and inserted into your document. Information which you cut or copy will remain in the storage buffer until you cut or copy new information into it or quit WordPerfect. Therefore, you can paste this information repeatedly and whenever you wish. A word of caution, any items left in the storage buffer when the system is shut down or restarted will be lost. To illustrate the cut command, let's begin by blocking the sentence, please try to reach me tomorrow between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. Include the period and the two spaces after the sentence. Now choose the cut command from the edit menu. The selected text disappears. To place the text in a different location, we can now use the paste command. Move the cursor to the last sentence in the document and select the Paste command from the Edit menu. The sentence that we just cut is immediately inserted into its new location in the document. You can also paste a selected block of text into another document. This feature can save you quite a bit of time if you need to duplicate part of one document in another. Instead of retyping the information, you can simply copy the text and then access the Paste command. To demonstrate the copy and paste commands, let's first select a block of text. Begin by selecting the first paragraph of the document. Once the text is blocked, we'll select the copy command from the edit menu. Notice that the text we have blocked was only copied and not removed from our document. Next, let's open a new document by selecting New from the File menu. A new document window appears. This new document has now become the active window. As we can see on the status bar, we are now working in document window number two. The document that we were previously working on, lesson two, is hidden behind this new document window. Go ahead and select the paste command from the edit menu. The text we copied from our first document is quickly inserted into the second document. You can have as many as nine document windows open at once in WordPerfect, making it easy to copy information from one document to another. To cycle through the documents which are currently open, select the next command from the window menu, or hold down the control key and press the letter Y. This will bring our original file to the front and make its window active. Choosing the next command again will bring the second document back to the front, making it the active window once again. Now let's close this window, Doc2, without saving it by selecting the Close command from the File menu. When the dialog box appears, click on No so the document will not be saved. You will then be returned to your first document window. If you have several windows open at a time, you can use the Next and Previous commands to switch between the documents which you currently have open. Remember, you have the option of using the shortcut keystrokes for many of the commands we have discussed thus far. Now, let's get acquainted with some of the features in WordPerfect which will be helpful in creating a memo. If you are used to working on a typewriter, you probably have used the spacebar to center a line of text. However, to center a title in WordPerfect, you should use the center command and not the spacebar. 
First, let's close the document we have been working on, Lesson 2, by selecting the Close command in the File menu. Click on the Yes button to save the changes we have made. A new document window will automatically appear. Now, to center a single line of text in our memo, we'll need to choose Alignment from the Layout menu. Notice that this selection is followed by a small arrow indicating that a cascading menu will appear. Choose the Center command from this menu. The cursor is now centered at the top of the page. Type in the word Memorandum and press the Enter key. The cursor returns to the left margin. Press the Enter key two more times. Whenever you type in WordPerfect, the characters will appear in normal text. If you want them to appear with a different attribute, like bold or italic, you will have to change them. Commands which change the appearance of type are located in the font menu. Click on the font menu to open it. Notice the many different attributes which can be selected to change your text. Also notice that the most commonly used attributes, such as normal, bold, underline, and italic, offer shortcut keystrokes. These shortcut keystrokes give you a quicker way to change the appearance of text. For example, as we learned earlier, instead of having to access the font menu and select bold each time you want bold type, you can simply press the F6 key to turn the bold attribute on and off. In the sample memo we are creating, we will make several words bold. Remember, if you feel more comfortable using the mouse to access these commands in the menu, continue to do so until you feel you're ready to try the shortcut keystrokes. Let's close the font menu now and press F6 to turn on bold. And then type the word 2 and a colon. Now, press the F6 key once again to turn off the bold feature. Press the tab key once and type the name Tom Redden. Then press the Enter key twice. We'll repeat the same procedure for the next three lines of text. Press F6 to turn on bold. Type the word from and a colon. Press F6 to turn off bold. Then press the Tab key once and type in the name William Powers. Then press the Enter key twice. F6, date, colon, F6, tab, June 24, 1995, and press the Enter key twice. F6, subject, colon, F6, tab, summer campaign ads, and at the end here, we'll press the Enter key three times. Don't worry if the text you just typed in doesn't seem to line up correctly. We'll fix it later. And if you accidentally bold any text that shouldn't be bold, block the text and then choose the normal selection from the font menu. Now, let's make a divider line which will separate the memo information we just typed from the body of the memo. By using the graphic line selection from the graphics menu, you can choose the exact position, thickness, line style, color, and spacing for a line. Go ahead and select Graphics Line from the Graphics menu, and then choose Create from its cascading menu. The Create Graphics Line dialog box appears. Here you can adjust the settings to customize a line. However, all the default settings are adequate for our demonstration, so we'll simply click on the OK button and then press the Enter key three times. For more information on creating graphic lines and page borders, consult your user's guide. Next, instead of typing the rest of the memo, let's retrieve the file we typed in earlier. The Retrieve feature imports a previously saved file into the current document. Go up to the File menu and select the Retrieve command. The Retrieve document dialog box appears. Type in the file name Lesson 2 and press the Enter key. The file is retrieved into the current document. Now let's save the changes we have made to this document by selecting the Save command from the File menu. We'll call this document Memo 1. WordPerfect also has an automatic backup feature.
approximately every 10 minutes, the program saves the document to disk. This feature will protect you from losing large amounts of data or documents due to power outages or other unforeseen problems. However, it is still highly recommended that you save changes to any document periodically while using any computer program. Another useful feature of WordPerfect is the vertical scroll bar, which allows you to easily move through a document using the mouse. Follow along as we demonstrate how to use this feature. Let's start by moving the cursor to the top of the document. Next, select the vertical scroll bar command from the view menu. Notice that a scroll bar appears on the right side of the document window. Within this scroll bar is the up scroll arrow, the scroll box, and the down scroll arrow. Clicking on the up or down scroll arrows, will move the cursor up or down one line each time you click. Clicking on the gray area above or below the scroll box will move the cursor up or down one screen each time you click. Next, we'll place the pointer on the scroll box itself and drag it to a new location. Whenever you drag the scroll box, the cursor will move to the area of your document proportional to the scroll box's position on the scroll bar. In other words, if you drag the scroll box halfway down the scroll bar, the cursor will be positioned approximately halfway through the document. Take some time out to experiment with the scroll bar until you feel confident using it. You can also maneuver through a document using the keys on your keyboard. These keystroke commands are listed in your user's guide. Now we'll demonstrate some of the text formatting commands available in WordPerfect. Formatting is a term used to describe the different ways text is positioned and displayed in a document. First, let's talk a little more about fonts. A font is a set of characters which have a specific design. Different printers can support different fonts. However, WordPerfect has provided you with several common fonts which will work with most printers. Here are some examples of these printed fonts. Courier, WordPerfect Helvetica, WordPerfect Roman. Each font is available in many different point sizes. Whenever you create a document in WordPerfect, the text you type will default to an initial font and size. After you have typed in your document, you can change the type in two ways. The first method of changing text attributes is to block a selection of text and then choose a new font or size from the font dialog box. This method will only change the text you have selected. Any text appearing before or after the selected text will not be affected. The second method of changing text attributes is by clicking at the point in the document where you would like the change to occur and then selecting a new font or size. This method will change all the text from the point where the cursor is located down through the rest of the document or until another font or size change is made. Now, let's go ahead and apply some of these formatting commands to text in our current document. Begin by blocking the word memorandum at the top of the document. Next, go up to the font menu and select the font menu item. The font dialog box will appear. Click on the down arrow in the font box and a drop-down list box appears, displaying all the available fonts supported by WordPerfect on your printer. Click on the down scroll arrow or press the down arrow key. Notice that as you scroll, the highlighted font will be displayed down below in the resulting font box. Continue to scroll until Helvetica WP is highlighted and then press the enter key. Next, click on the down arrow next to the size selection box to display the list of available type sizes for the selected font. Click on the number 18 to select 18 point type and press the enter key. Then click on the OK button to activate these changes. The word memorandum is now in 18 point WordPerfect Helvetica. Now, Let's change the rest of the text in our memo to the WordPerfect Roman font. This time we'll have the font change effect from the location of the cursor down through the rest of the document. 
let's use the shortcut keystroke to bring up the font dialog box by holding down on the control key and then pressing the F8 key. Move the cursor to the blank line below the word memorandum. Now, hold down on the control key and press the F8 key to bring up the font dialog box. Next, either click on the word font or press the F key to display the list of available fonts. You can either scroll through the font list to find the Word Perfect Roman typeface or simply type in the word Roman. Notice that the font Roman WP is now highlighted. Press the Enter key and then click on the OK button. The rest of the document is changed to the WP Roman font. Also take note that any text we may add to the end of this document will also appear in the Roman font, unless we make another font change. Now that we know how to make font and size changes, let's talk a little more about some other text formatting features, namely margins, line spacing, tabs, and indents. First, let's discuss margins. Whenever you create a new document, the margins will be preset at one inch, unless you change them. To change the margin settings, start by moving the cursor to the top of the document. You need to do this because when you change the margin settings, the new settings are applied from the current cursor position on down until the next margin change. Next, go up to the layout menu and select margins. The margin format dialog box appears. Enter the left margin entry field by clicking on it or pressing the number 1 key. Now, type in 1.5 inches. Press the tab key once to move to the right margin entry field and type in 1.5 inches. And finally, tab one more time to move to the top margin entry field and type in 2 inches. Now, click on the OK button. Now, when we print this document, the top margin of the page will be offset two inches from the top edge of the paper on every page, and the left and right margins will be offset 1.5 inches from the edge of the paper, beginning with the paragraph in which our cursor is located. Adjusting margins can be a useful feature when you need to allow for a pre-printed letterhead at the top of each page, or you need extra space to make the pages easier to bind or punch holes in after you have printed them. In WordPerfect, the space between lines of type is referred to as line spacing. When you create a new document, line spacing will default to single spacing, unless you change it. Because many documents require different types of line spacing, WordPerfect gives you the option of changing the setting. Let's change some of the lines in our document to be double-spaced. Position the cursor anywhere within the first paragraph. Next, select Line from the Layout menu the line format dialog box appears. Go ahead and select the line spacing entry field by clicking on it or pressing the number 3 key. Type in the number 2 for double spacing. Then click on the OK button. The document is now double spaced, beginning with the paragraph where we had the cursor placed and continuing through the end of the document. If you wanted to change the line spacing in a specific paragraph, you could do so by blocking the text. Go ahead and block the third paragraph in the document. Choose Line from the Layout menu, select Line Spacing, and type in the number 1 for single space type. Close the box by clicking on the OK button. As we can see, only the paragraph we had selected has become single spaced. Now that we've adjusted our margins and line spacing, let's set the text justification for our memo. In WordPerfect, text can be aligned to the left margin, right margin, centered, fully justified, or fully justified on all lines. To change the justification, you can use the commands in the Justification submenu. The text which will be affected begins with the paragraph you have the cursor in and continues on down through the end of the document. Position the cursor anywhere within the first paragraph. Next, go up to the Layout menu and select Justification. 
then choose Full. The paragraphs are now fully justified. WordPerfect supports several different types of tabs, which allow you to specify the horizontal alignment of text in your document. Left tabs are the most common. These tabs cause the text to move to the right of the tab. Right tabs cause text to move backward to the left of the tab. Centered tabs cause the text to center itself around the tab. And finally, decimal tabs cause the decimal point in the text to be aligned with the tab stop. A word of caution here. Do not use the space bar by pressing it several times to indent or tab text. If you do, text may not line up correctly when the document is printed. However, using tabs will ensure you of proper alignment. Here is an example displaying each type of tab, left, center, decimal, and right tabs. In WordPerfect, tabs are preset with left tabs every half inch. In other words, every time you press the tab key, the cursor will move in half inch increments. However, you can change the tab settings to suit your needs. Let's demonstrate the use of tabs in our memo. But before we change the settings, let's add a few tabs to our document. Move the cursor to just before the word to, and then press the tab key. Follow the same procedure to insert a tab at the beginning of the next three lines. When you are changing tab settings, you can have the changes affect from the cursor on down, or have them affect only a portion of the document which you have blocked. For our example, because we only want to change the tab settings for the top portion of our document, we'll first block the text from the word to to the word adds. Now, select the Tab Set command from the Layout menu. The Tab Set dialog box opens. In the upper half of the dialog box, we can see a ruler running across the top of the selected text. Below the ruler is a row of letter L's, representing a left tab.